the Union Pacific Big Boy weighed more than a Boeing 747 and could drag over 4,000 tons through mountain grades that broke lesser engines. Built to conquer the Wasatch bottleneck at the height of World War II, its raw force came with a price. 300 pounds of steam pressure, temperatures topping 120 degrees in the cab, and a single mistake that could turn power into catastrophe. How deadly was the big boy actually? And what did it take to control such unstoppable machinery? The answer begins with a crisis in the mountains. Freight trains stacked up at the foot of the Wasatch Mountains, each one waiting for its turn to crawl up the 1.14% grade between Ogden and Green River. This stretch of track was more than a line on a map. It was the most critical choke point on Union Pacific's transcontinental route. By the late 1930s, the volume of goods moving east and west had soared, but the mountains stood in the way. Every heavy train needed two or even three locomotives just to make the climb. That meant helpers had to be cut in at Ogden, then removed at Echo or the summit, adding nearly an hour to each run. On busy days, the delays multiplied. Crews waited for helpers to return and freight traffic backed up for miles. As war loomed in Europe and Asia, the stakes grew. By 1942, wartime demand pushed annual tonnage over the Wasatch route to more than 3 million tons, nearly double what it had been just five years before. Union Pacific's own records show ton miles on this section jumped from 610 million in 1938 to over 1.1 billion by 1943. Helper crews worked around the clock, but it wasn't enough. The bottleneck strangled the main artery of the railroad's network threatening to slow the movement of military supplies and vital goods when every hour counted. Union Pacific's planners faced a clear demand, eliminate the helper congestion or risk falling behind the nation's wartime needs. The only answer was a locomotive unlike anything the world had seen. A single engine powerful enough to muscle the heaviest trains up the Wasatch alone in its speed. Otto Jabelman and his team at the American Locomotive Company faced a challenge that pushed the boundaries of steam era engineering. The specifications called for a single locomotive able to haul over 3,600 tons up the Wasatch grade, unassisted, at speeds that would keep wartime freight moving. The solution began with the 4884 wheel arrangement, four leading wheels for stability, two sets of eight driving wheels for maximum traction, and four trailing wheels to support the largest firebox ever mounted on a steam engine. This articulated design allowed the big boy to flex around mountain curves that would have stopped a rigid frame dead in its tracks. The firebox itself was a feat of scale, stretching nearly 10 feet across to burn enough coal for the massive boiler above it. Inside the boiler, engineers aimed for a working pressure of 300 pounds per square inch a figure that would drive over 6,000 horsepower through the pistons and rods. Achieving this required not just size, but strength, thick steel plates, thousands of stay bolts, and precise welding to contain a roaring inferno under relentless pressure. To keep all that weight on the rails, the designers implemented a three-point suspension system. This innovation distributed over a million pounds evenly across the locomotive's length, ensuring the driving wheels maintained grip even on uneven track. Alco's sketches from the era show painstaking calculations, weight, balance, and stress, each decision balancing raw power with the realities of steel and steam. The result was a machine that translated impossible demands into blueprints for the largest, most powerful steam locomotive the world had ever seen. The first big boy took shape in Schenectady, New York, where shop workers at the American Locomotive Company assembled a machine unlike any built before. The story goes that a worker, awed by its size, scrawled big boy in chalk across the smoke box, an offhand name that stuck to all 25 engines that followed. Between 1941 and 1944, Union Pacific accepted delivery of these giants, each stretching more than 132 feet and weighing in at over 1.2 million pounds with the tender. The price tag was staggering for the era. Each big boy cost Union Pacific between $265,000 and $319,000.
a sum that would equal roughly $5 million today. Invoices from the period list everything from massive cast steel frames to the intricate valve gear, all built for a single purpose, to conquer the grades of the Utah division. Once delivered, the big boys began their careers on the Ogden to Green River run, immediately becoming the backbone of Union Pacific's busiest mountain territory. Their arrival meant fewer helper engines, faster schedules, and a new era for freight moving west. Union Pacific's own test reports captured the raw force of the big boy in black and white numbers. Dynamometer cars riding behind the locomotive recorded a sustained 6,290 horsepower at the drawbar, enough to move 4,450 tons of freight up a 1.14% mountain grade, unassisted, and keep climbing at over 40 miles per hour. On flatter stretches, the engine could pull trains more than five miles long from a dead stop a feat almost unthinkable in steam's heyday. The tractive effort reached 135,000 pounds, making the big boy the most powerful steam locomotive ever put into regular service. Feeding this appetite for power demanded staggering quantities of fuel and water. At full throttle, the firebox devoured 11 tons of coal every hour, enough to fill a rail car by lunchtime. The massive tender coupled behind carried 25,000 gallons of water and 56,000 pounds of coal, but even that could vanish in less than three hours of hard mountain running. Crews described the experience as riding a volcano. Every gauge, every valve, every shovel full of coal measured against the relentless pull of gravity and steel. In the cab, the numbers weren't just statistics. They were the difference between a successful climb and a stalled train on the grade. Inside the big boy's cab, the air often shimmered with heat, pushing past 120 degrees, even on a cool day. Crews worked stripped to their undershirts, sweat stinging their eyes as they kept one hand on the throttle and the other near the emergency brake. The mantra was simple, but absolute. Miss a single valve, overlook a warning sign, and disaster could strike without mercy. Every run demanded constant vigilance, Bearings could overheat in minutes, turning a routine trip into a race against meltdown. The threat was not abstract. On April 27, 1953, Big Boy No. 4005 left the rails near Wamsutter, Wyoming. The train, traveling at nearly 50 miles per hour, hit a switch set for a siding. The locomotive and 18 cars tumbled into twisted wreckage. Engineer Leo Murray and fireman Lawrence Andres died on impact. Brakeman James Anderton survived the crash but suffered fatal burns, passing away two days later. Accident investigators traced the cause to a misaligned switch and a breakdown in crew communication. One mistake, three lives lost, and a stark reminder of the unforgiving power these machines wielded. Keeping a big boy in service demanded a level of shop work few machines ever required. Each locomotive carried hundreds of lubrication points all mapped out in meticulous charts and checked daily by crews armed with oil cans and wrenches. Mechanics crawled beneath the boilers to inspect bearings, searching for even a hint of overheating that could spell disaster on the main line. Boiler tubes and stay bolts faced relentless stress and needed regular replacement, a job that often meant squeezing through scalding, confined spaces. Heavy cranes, capable of lifting entire driver sets or main rods, were essential tools, not luxuries. In the shops, every shift was a race against wear, heat, and gravity, with teams of specialists working around the clock to keep the giants rolling. Diesel Electrics rewrote the rule book almost overnight. A typical three-unit diesel set could match a big boy's tonnage, but with half the crew and less than 40% of the maintenance hours. Union Pacific's own figures show diesel slashing cost per ton mile from nearly seven cents with steam to just over two. The new engines could be coupled in any combination, started cold and run for days without the round the clock shop work steam demanded. For the big boys, this meant the end. 17 were cut up for scrap, their era closed. Eight survived, scattered from Cheyenne to Dallas, silent, but not forgotten. In December 2012, Union Pacific announced the return of Big Boy 4014. 
After its 2013 move from California, a dedicated crew led by Ed Dickens rebuilt the giant in Cheyenne, investing over $4 million and converting it to oil. On May 1, 2019, 4014 thundered back to life, later receiving positive train control in 2021. In 2023, it assisted a stalled freight, proving its strength endures. Plans for a national tour in 2026 promise new crowds and fresh awe. In total, 25 Union Pacific Big Boy locomotives were built between 1941 and 1944, each designed to conquer the Wasatch Grade's 1.14% climb. The Big Boy's record, hauling over 4,400 tons and generating 6,290 horsepower, proved that a single engine could meet wartime freight demands, yet also exposed crews to extreme heat and relentless mechanical risks. The 1953 Wamsutter derailment stands as the only fatal accident on record, a reminder that even engineering triumphs carried a human cost. While most big boys were scrapped by 1962, eight survive as evidence of their scale and ambition. Questions about the full extent of day-to-day -day hazards remain, as many operational records and crew accounts are incomplete. Today, big boy number 4014 runs with modern safety systems, bridging past and present. The big boy's legacy is not just power or peril, but a testament to what America's railways demanded and achieved in the face of impossible odds.